What's up, hello, and welcome to today's 360 Life video. In today's video, we are taking a look at four of the new VR headsets on the market, comparing their specs and features. So stick around while we take a deeper dive. Welcome back and thanks for hanging out. Let us know what feature or spec makes you want to run out and buy a new headset, or maybe you already did. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more of our VR news and reviews. So with so many new VR headsets on the market, are you having difficulty deciding which HMD you should buy? Or perhaps you just want to weigh all of the facts? Well, you have come to the right video. We will be looking at features, specifications, and their strengths and weaknesses. Specifications like pricing, resolution, field of view, and refresh rates. All in an attempt to help you determine which HMD is best for you and your hard-earned money. Or just provide a different perspective. So to get us started, let's take a look at what must be one of the most hyped VR products to come to market in several years, the Oculus Quest. Well, this is a standalone device needing no PC or wires and with its inside out tracking offering six degrees of freedom experiences. It will also no doubt have a great library to pull from with lots of developers looking to get their products in front of this newest group of VR consumers. The Quest has two different models, one with 64 gigs of storage and one equipped with 128. They are priced at $399 and $499 respectively. It has a pretty impressive 1600 by 1440 per eye resolution with a 100 degree field of view and a 72 hertz refresh rate. It utilizes four built-in cameras to provide its tracking. It is equipped with a Snapdragon 835 mobile processor, so graphics will be limited compared to its PC-powered brethren, obviously. The Quest Pros. The biggest is the fact that it is a standalone headset delivering six degrees of freedom. It has good resolution and good built-in audio and offers a great value to someone who does not own a VR capable PC and either has no interest or simply can't afford one. It's also going to be a breeze for a newbie to get started. Its cons are also standalone centric with its battery life limiting playtime and the need to charge it definitely being factors to consider. And lastly, you will be limited to the graphic fidelity that the mobile CPU is able to handle. The next headset on our list is another offering that got people really talking, and Valve did a nice job keeping details slim before its official pre-sale announcement. And this is the Valve Index. The Valve Index looks to be positioned as the premium offering and certainly the most expensive if you need to purchase the entire package. For users who already own a Vive, there are upgrade packages that can save you some money, while the Index has gone live for pre-sale at this point, shipping dates are August 31st, with the initial orders slated for delivery in late June or early July. The Index is offered in several packages ranging from $499 to $999. You can purchase the headset by itself if you already own base stations and controllers for $499, you can buy a headset and controllers for $749, or you can buy the entire package for $999. You will of course need a VR capable PC, and to really take advantage of the new refresh rates, one with a beefy GPU is recommended. The Index has 1440 by 16 per eye resolution, with a full RGB LCD and good fill rates to minimize the screen door effect. It has a 110 degrees field of view and an amazing 120 hertz refresh rate with 144 megahertz being currently experimented with. It has mechanical IPD, which is a feature we are seeing missing in most competitors HMDs. Its pros are its high refresh rate LCD screens, which provide very immersive experiences. It has great controllers built-in audio, and a great library of games and experiences. 
This will certainly be the premium setup for room scale VR users with no monetary limitations. Cons, the first is its price. It comes in quite a bit higher than its competitors, along with the need for a higher end VR PC. And yes, there are wires. And still quite a lead time if you are looking to get your feet wet right now in the VR space. The next headset is the newest Microsoft HMD and is aimed primarily at enterprise environments, although consumer versions are also available at a discounted rate. This is the HP Reverb. The Reverb, as I mentioned, is focused on enterprise, business, and commercial use cases, ranging from design and training to location-based entertainments. The Reverb has gone live for sale, but currently looks to be out of stock. The HP Reverb runs $599 for its consumer version and has a class leading 2160 by 2160 per eye resolution. It has 114 degrees of field of view, all at 90 Hertz. It uses two cameras for its inside out six degrees of freedom tracking. With its high resolution, a very high end VR capable PC is not just recommended, but required. The reverb comes with two Windows mixed reality controllers. Cons are its very high PC spec requirements, its controllers are only okay, and with only two cameras for tracking, it is perhaps not the best choice for high action room scale experiences. The last headset in today's VR shootout is the Rift S. With the announcements of the Rift S going for sale, the original Rift is no longer for sale, and the Rift S was clearly designed as the Rift's direct replacement, which is not a bad thing, but perhaps not the most exciting product in all of the recent VR announcements. The Rift S costs $399 and has a resolution of 1280 by 1440 per eye. It has a 100 degree field of view running at 80 hertz. It has five cameras for inside out tracking, allowing for easier setup than the original Rift. They kept the resolution on the low side, so it shares PC specs with the original Rift, which are on the low side for VR capable PCs. Pros are, it has better resolution than the original Rift, it's easier to set up, it has good controllers, and a great existing game library. Cons, it has a lower resolution than the Oculus Quest, a lower refresh rate than the original Rift, they did not make any huge advancements with the S aside from its inside out tracking, but holds at what is certainly a reasonable price marketed to mainstream users. So to wrap this up, the Quest is a great choice for someone who wants a mobile and standalone experience. It's a reasonable price and six degree of freedom certainly appeal to many people including people who may already own a VR headset and want to get away from cables, to the standalone user wanting to get into a six degree of freedom HMD without the need for a PC or a console. The Index is the choice for the premium consumer, wanting room scale, high performance, high frame rate, and high speed experiences. It's expensive, but with its high PC requirements for the targeted market, this is probably not too much of a concern. The Reverb, with its exceptional resolution, are going to appeal to simulation buffs and for productivity. It has reasonable pricing, but I think its lackluster controls and two camera tracking are going to keep this from being the mainstream choice, which I guess doesn't matter as it was never HP's intention. Last, the Rift S. For the VR user who doesn't have the baller budget, but wants the experience that only the PC has to offer, this hits a lot of marks. With its improved ease of use and setup, this should bring a lot more people to VR, which is what Mark Zuckerberg aims to do. And this HMD is definitely aimed at appealing to the masses. What new VR HMD are you most interested in? Personally, I have an Oculus Quest coming and I can't wait to try it out, knowing I can pack it up and bring it with me for show and tell sessions anywhere. I hope you liked today's video, cause that's a wrap. Hit the like button if you did and subscribe for more VR news and reviews. But most importantly, don't forget to enjoy that 360 life.